Bam. Okay, so now I'm recording. Sweet. So I can post that on YouTube when I'm done reacting. This is going to be a big, chunky one. 40 minutes. Holy crap. Tune in for roughly 40 minutes of information focused on 2019 Nintendo Switch games, including Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield and Luigi's Mansion 3. Those are not what I'm excited for. I'm excited for the stuff we don't know because I'm going to be honest. Uh, the only thing... I mean, yeah, sure, I guess I am interested in Pokemon. I want to see what the game looks like. I'm not going to buy it because, uh, you know, the whole situation. Uh, Luigi's Mansion 3, I don't know if I'm going to get that. Uh, honestly, I've never played any of the Luigi's Mansion games, so I feel like I need to kind of play the other ones first in order to, to kind of fully appreciate the third one. I need to do that one day. Or my Super Nintendo shirt, just because we're getting SNES games on the on the uh, online service. I it's time. It's been it's been nearly a year since we've gotten the Nintendo Online, and um, be honest, the NES games, I think they're running out. Oh, we're good. We're starting. Let's go. I gotta make sure volume's good. Let's go. Overwatch. Oh, that was predicted. Not a big Overwatch fan, but this is awesome for a lot of people. Gyro controls, that's sweet. That's good. You gotta have the gyro controls. Glorious. October 15th. Next month. Cool. Hello everyone, I'll be your guide for today's Nintendo Direct. I'm Shinya Takahashi. And that was, of course, the latest trailer for Overwatch by Blizzard Entertainment. The game is scheduled for release on Nintendo Switch October 15th, so please look forward to it. Okay, let's get into our first batch of Nintendo Switch headlines. Please take a look. You gotta see these floors of the hotel for yourself. Luigi's Mansion 3 takes place in a haunted hotel where every floor has a distinct theme unlike any other. Case in point, Tomb Suites. I mean, a pyramid inside a hotel? That's cool. You should expect some mummies, harsh sands, and booby traps. As for the other floors, well, there's a disco floor, a pirate themed <laughs> restaurant. Hey, that's cool. Get the idea. May not be the usual amenities, but there's a rogues gallery of bosses to check out before you, well, check out. Speaking of amenities, step right up to this all new attraction, Screen Park. In this party mode, there's a Luigi team and a Gooigi team. What? Only one Nintendo Switch system, two to eight players can battle it out. See which team can defeat the most ghosts. Collect the most coins by piloting floaties with the Poltergust G00. <laughs> break the most targets. Hey, even Luigi needs a break sometimes. Luigi's Mansion 3 opens its doors on October 31st, just in time for Just Halloween. in time for Halloween. <laughs> Get a load of this new free to start Kirby game. The combined forces of Kirby, 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 and Kirby are in for some wicked boss fights. We're calling it Super Kirby Clash. Take up quests in town, and collectively, you and your team will pick four jobs. Wasn't expecting a Kirby game so soon. That's right. Get your weapons, get your gear, and get ready. Some mighty tough enemies await. There are more than 100 quests. So, get a look at your enemy and make sure you have the right jobs for the job. The key to victory is to know your role and work as a team. 
can play alone, together on one system, team up via local wireless, or even play online. What's up, Jello? It'll be time to unite with friends and players from around the world and overcome each challenging quest when Super Kirby Clash launches later today. Oh, Shadow Drop, sweet. Free to start too. This long-awaited, recently released... They put Overwatch in the Switch. Remake. After 25 years, fans of the Mana series can look forward to the HD remake of the third game in the trilogy, Trials of Mana. From six different characters, you'll choose a particular Yeah, I'm not a fan either, but companions. some people like that. Will determine which of the interwoven stories you'll this looks more like, more like my style. Whoa! Take old bitties. This interference will not be forgotten. As each character advances, they'll have the opportunity to switch their class, allowing them to learn stronger special moves and spells. Step into the light. Or show your dark side when picking your class to change your character's appearance and abilities. Unlike the classic version, characters have full range of movement, including jumping and combo attacks for each member of your party. Once again, the wheels of fate are beginning to turn. Find out what's in store for the beloved world of Trials of Mana on April. Not too far off. Looks like fun. Just what happened to the crew of this doomed ship? The Oberdin vanished at sea in 1803. What is this? Only to wash up four years later in Falmouth, England with no sign of survivors. The fate of the crew remains unknown. As an insurance investigator for the East India Company, you must board the ship and uncover the mystery of its disappearance and return. Your analysis will rely heavily on one less than ordinary device. Use the power of the Momentum Mortem Pocket Watch to turn back time and witness each soul's last moment. You That's a cool concept. Exactly what I give you. Explore the ship. Yeah, it's not easy in the eyes. And record your logical deductions. It doesn't translate well to a to a video either. What brought the Oberdin to such an end? Little by little, tease apart the misfortunes of the ship and its crew to solve the mystery. Return of the Oberdin arrives on Nintendo Switch in fall 2019. Okay. There's a small town out there with a big secret. Oh, is this that town? Oh, Game Freak game, the, the town game. That is the rule agreed upon by the people of this peaceful town. And the castle protecting so this is why sword and shield's not that good <laughs> i kid i kid suddenly appeared a giant kind of not though to defend the townspeople one boy named axe will stand up to face it and the only weapons he'll need are ideas but to win one of these battles you must know when to use them it looks cool though he is everything if there's any hope to win during battle you can move around to garner support from townspeople. Take advantage to gain the advantage. Seize every I will say, definitely looks like it maybe started development on like the 3DS or something. <laughs> and almost all the music in the game was composed by Undertale creator Toby Fox. Whoa, that's really cool. Little town hero will make a stand. That's really cool. October 16th. I love the uh, the music from that game. Don't like the game that much, but the music, yeah. Fall is coming to Super Smash Bros. Oh, we got some Smash news. Sweet. We can finally confirm the release date of Challenger Pack 3, Banjo and Kazooie. Banjo and Kazooie. And the release date is... Today. Yo, Shadow Drop. Sweet. Are we going to play some Smash after this? <laughs> how to use Banjo and Kazooie, featuring the game's director, Masahiro Sakurai. Now nah, I don't need to see that. <laughs> I just want to play. The video will begin immediately. That's cool. Shadow drop today. Direct you're watching right now. To tide yourself over until the release of Banjo and Kazooie, please check it out. But first. Oh. Oh, 
Oh no, they're gonna hate us with nostalgia, aren't they? Okay, so the rumors I think were true. Neo Geo, yeah. There's an SNK character joining Smash. That leaked. Yeah, I'm not a fighting games kind of guy, but Smash is like the exception to that. Who gets to be in Smash? <laughs> Is he? Oh, there he's crying for a second. Hey, come on! South America is probably super, super hype right now. Is SNK super popular in South America? November. Cool. Pretty close. So, Terry Bogard from Fatal Fury is joining the battle. That means we've revealed I approve. the five fighters included in the fighters pass. Can there really be only one left? Oh. We're happy to confirm the development of more DLC fighters for Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. What? Inside the five fighters included in the fighters pass. That's hype. Holy shit. The battle isn't over yet. That is really really cool. I think I remember saying that too. I don't think it's just going to be those five. <laughs> so, what do you think? That's cool. That's cool. That's hype. about additional fighters at the end of that segment. We'll have more to share with you in the future. For now, let's continue with some more Nintendo Switch headlines. It's about time to wake the windfish in The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. Oh, I can't wait for this. The next big adventure on Nintendo Switch is faster Oh, I can't wait for this. You'll meet some strangely endearing islanders. Face a series of puzzling tasks. Just give me the game already. After some oddly familiar faces. Whatever happens, help Link escape Koholint Island before its mysteries get the best of him. With the all-new Chamber Dungeon, you can place chambers earned on your adventure to arrange your own dungeons. Add in plus effects that alter chambers and save chamber dungeons to a compatible amiibo figure featuring a yeah, that's cool. from the Legend of Zelda series. That way, your friends can play them. Be ready. The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening will launch before you know it on September 20th. The new mm -hmm. Link amiibo figure will be available yeah, that's cool. on the same day. Super, super cool. I want to try that. You know the hero's might from Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Now join his adventure. Dragon Quest XI S, Echoes of an Elusive Age Definitive Edition is exactly that. I wonder if they're going to add like the special edition stuff to the PC port and the PS4 port and all that stuff. I get the feeling it might stay exclusive, which is going to suck. Because I already have this game on Steam. It's a good game. The day the game launches, free downloadable content can be found in the Champions Pack including consumable items and more equipment that can change the appearance of party members. An RPG giant draws near. Dragon Quest XI S, Echoes of an Elusive Age Definitive Edition journeys onto Nintendo Switch September 27th. Until then, you can prepare for your adventure with the free demo on Nintendo eShop. I have it on PS4. I actually got it on the Amazon Prime sale. 
Tokyo. Whoa! I can't believe they ported this. The Fire Emblem series and Atlas games have crossed paths, and the result is coming to Nintendo Switch. I might get this. Place in modern day Tokyo, where creative energy is so abundant, it's materialized into something called Performa. Hey, it's really good because I heard that the game was pretty good. Give it another, a second chance, you know? As up and comer Itsuki Aoi and his friends who are trying to make it in the entertainment business. Fire Emblem characters like Prom and Sita will join you from another dimension. Together, you'll wage deep turn based battles, blending the combat of the Fire Emblem and Shin Megami Tensei series. And in the Nintendo Switch version, there's a new song that wasn't included in the original. Be sure to check out the other new features, from the new story elements to the characters joining you in battle for cool. the first time. Hey, is that Tiki? Oh, that's cool. Tokyo Mirage Sessions Sharp FE on Oh, pretty soon. January 17th. Hey, I might get that. You can pre-purchase the game later today. Welcome back to where nothing is what it seems. Boston, 2019. It all begins again when FBI agent oh, Aaliyah Davis opens an investigation in into an in old fact, serial killer she... case. She also opens a door to the unknown, a door that also takes us back to New Orleans 14 years oh. ago. Excuse me? Here, our story follows an FBI agent who goes by the name of York. Exactly. Like the journey he's... between past and present will take Aaliyah and York on a winding path. But what lies at the end? Will it be truth or madness? Deadly Premonition 2, A Blessing in Disguise oh, sweet. Guiles on Nintendo Switch in 2020. And now for a shocker. The original game in the series will launch a Nintendo eShop at Deadly Premonition Origins. Hey, that's really cool. I might get that. Divinity, Original Sin 2. Oh, that's cool. That is cool. Divinity on the Switch? That is really cool. This is a good game. I have it on Steam. There's a campaign that my friends and I have been on for like maybe a year and a half. We need to keep going, man. It's really hard to get four people together to continue the story. That's the only thing, man. That is cool. So I can continue my save on the Switch. That's really cool. I don't know. I think it's just cross save. I don't. I don't imagine it'd be that way. It'd be cool though. Fans, Pete Hines from Bethesda. On behalf of everyone at id Software, I'm excited to announce something really cool that we have coming to Nintendo Switch later this year. I'm sure many of you have fond memories of spending countless hours playing your favorite games on Nintendo 64. Well. This year is the 25th anniversary of Doom, one of the most popular first-person shooter franchises ever. And to celebrate, you don't like Bethesda? Releasing one of our favorite games, Doom 64. Ha! <laughs> I'm getting that. I'm getting that. If you shadow drop that, I'll get that today. Will be officially available on a Nintendo console. We live your crusade against the demon. I'm getting that. I never played Doom 64. Or if you're a newcomer. Experience the retro first-person shooter that helped make Doom one of the most popular shooter franchises in history. I freaking love Doom. 64 will release on Nintendo Switch on November 22nd this year. Okay, that's a that's a must-buy. I'm getting that. Introducing a brand new IP from developer High Res Studios, Rogue Company, to most of the world. Rogue Company is a rumor at best, but its operatives are the real deal. And as one of these elite Dude, I have the collector's edition pre-ordered where you get like the actual helmet. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be able to do it, but I'm going to try to stream with the helmet on. <laughs> I spent way too much money on that, <laughs> but I freaking love Doom, man. Whether you wield guns, gadgets, or melee weapons, your playstyle will depend on your choice of mercenary, which can be fully customized. There will be plenty of modes 
maps, weapons, skins, in-game events, and watch it not fit my head. <laughs> when World Cup heats up on Nintendo Switch in 2020. I couldn't justify it either, but uh, I don't know, man. I had to. I had to, man. And Pokemon Shield. Oh, well, Pokemon stuff. To share that will shed new light on this next Pokemon adventure. Please take a look. Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield take place in the Gala region, a scenic land where people and Pokemon work together toward a prosperous future. Among them, you'll encounter new Pokemon and meet new people throughout your adventure. Today, we'll cover four features you can look forward to. How about national decks? Customizing your look. Once again, the latest entry in the series lets you pick your outfit. This time, it's not just tops and bottoms, but a wide variety, including outerwear and gloves. Yeah, that's cool. Plus, you can change your hairstyle or put on a little makeup. There's a lot more to becoming a champion than simply honing your battle skills. You've got to look the part too, don't you think? Fashion is a true end game. Second, Pokemon Camp. During your journey through the Gala region, you can camp anytime at Pokemon Camp. While you're there, you can play with your Pokemon. And as you get to know them better, they'll also improve in battle. Additionally, in the wild area, you can visit other players' camps too. That's adorable. Bring along one of your Pokemon and hang out with up to three other players at the camp. We definitely recommend interacting with another player's Pokemon. Third, curry on rice. Pokemon Camp is also a great place to cook up a dish that is very popular in the Gala region. Curry on rice. How your curry turns out and what type it is ultimately depends on... They always have to do some kind of weird gimmick giving Pokemon treats, not just curry. The heart you put into it. There are more than 100 types. And each one you cook up will be registered in your curry decks. The goal? To master the art of curry. Huh? What's that Pokemon doing here? And fourth, new Pokemon. Introduce some new Pokemon discovered in the Gala region. First is Pokemon. It's a teapot. Normally, it makes a home for. Okay, it's a ghost type then. That, that's fine. That's cool. And restaurants. I know. I know. I I'm pretty mad still. It may even allow a trusting. As it doesn't matter how good this game is, like with without that feature, I can't justify buying the game. I gotta vote my wallet on this one. Another new Pokemon called Cramorant. This that thing looks so funny. <laughs> it looks so funny. It will swallow anything it can fit in its mouth. I played Pokemon for like eight months trying to complete the Pokedex, and then Game Freak fucks me over, and I can't <laughs> complete the decks now. If it takes damage in this state, it'll retaliate by spitting out its catch at the attacker. This is Cramorant's exclusive new ability, Gulp Missile. And that's all we have to share with you today. Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield will launch on Nintendo Switch November 15th. It's a blue mage. <laughs> I get that reference. How about that? There are still two more months until the game releases. Please look forward. We still got half a direct, man. In the Gala region. So, it's been about a year since we began offering Nintendo Switch online. Oh, we're getting Super Nintendo games. We're getting Super Online. We're providing a variety of games and fun features. Come on. And now, give me the Super Nintendo games. An additional library of games. It's called Super Yes. Yes. Nintendo Switch Online. With this, you can Sweet. play of classic Super NES games on Nintendo Switch. Finally, it took them long enough. There are some you may not expect, like Stunt Race FX, which will be available to play on another system for the first time. You can face off or team up in local multiplayer by passing a Joy-Con controller to a. Oh, I know somebody's happy to see that. Play together online. Oh. Oh, 
coming soon will be available. <laughs> that game's so freaking hard, dude. Here are the first games we plan to release. Link to the past, sweet. All 20 of the games you see on screen will launch tomorrow. Damn, no Donkey Kong Country? Of tomorrow, sweet! We'll eventually add more to the lineup. This offer is exclusively available to Nintendo Switch. Yeah, hey, I see a controller in a jacket. So please enjoy them at no additional charge. I don't need one, though. Oh, I got my own! You noticed this, did you? To recapture the original feel of these games, we will be releasing a Super Nintendo Entertainment System Nintendo Switch Online exclusive controller as a special offer. To charge it, you can use a USB cable, just like the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. This Super NES-style controller will be available the price isn't bad. exclusively for Nintendo Switch Online members. Visit the Nintendo website for the latest... But I don't need that. I got these 8-bit dough ones. These are really cool. These are third. These were 35 bucks, and they work on Bluetooth, so you can use them on anything, including the Switch. Sure, you know Tetris, but can you survive this? Version 2.0. Nintendo Switch Online members, the large-scale puzzle battle game Tetris 99 is getting a free update. Tetris 99 Invictus is here, and not for the faint of heart. You can't even play it until you achieve Tetris Maximus status. You're hoping more info? Against the best of the best? We're probably going to get another Pokemon Direct before it releases. We're also adding in daily missions for some added challenges. By clearing these missions, you can acquire tickets and exchange them for a variety of custom themes. Sweet. Yeah, it's cool. Not a Tetris guy, but I know a lot of people who love this game. We're in a vast array of new player icons, too. Beyond that, the second wave of paid DLC is here as well. In two-player share battle mode, pass a Joy-Con controller to a friend for a two-player game against each other and the CPU, and get together with friends to battle via local wireless on your Nintendo That's cool. systems in local arena mode. The version 2.0 update for Tetris 99 will be available tomorrow. A packaged version includes... Yeah, me too. That It's really cool watching someone who's good at Tetris. I don't know what it is about it, but exciting Mario and Sonic are ready to kick it old school in Tokyo Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games has become a tradition of its own this time there are more than 20 events including the 100 meter karate football skateboarding rugby sevens sport climbing, never really been into these badminton, gymnastics surfing but that's cool and you know what for whoever likes these games where that came from Check out these 10 retro style events. That's cool. Each one rocking some sweet That's actually really cool. I don't know why, but it's cool. All retro and very refreshing to play. On top of that, there are new mini games, unlockable characters, and a story mode in which Mario, Sonic, Bowser, and Dr. Eggman must escape from a game based on the Olympic Games Tokyo 1964. Hey, they added a story. That's cool. <laughs> Tokyo 2020 will go for the gold November 5th. The next Damon X Machina demo will be here sooner than you think. I thought that game was out already. Games release next week. The free oh, next week. Damon X Machina prologue demo will be available for download later today. I had a fear. In this prologue, you'll man your mech through the beginning of the game. And all of your progress can carry over to the full game. That's cool how like a lot of devs are doing that where you, your demo passes on to the full game. The perfect time to take one for a test drive. A key feature of this demo is the co-op mode for up to four players. And we're happy to report that it can be played via local wireless. So gather your friends and make the bosses feel like the little guys. The full game will also support online play. Be ready by customizing your mech and honing your skills on missions. What hides beneath your mech's armor? This looks cool, but I've never really been a mech guy. Damon X Machina will be ready for action September 13th. Maybe. I don't know. It's possible. They've done it in the past. A Star Wars classic so fun, it's back for more. Star Wars. Kyle Katarn, agent of the New Republic, oh. <laughs> is on to stop a rogue Jedi. Get your lightsaber at the ready. Blaster in hand. That's cool. And prepare to wield the full power of the Force. Courtesy of Aspire, the full single-player experience of Star Wars Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast is coming to Nintendo Switch September 24th. 
we've got new details on some upcoming games. Here's where my journey begins. You are Geralt of Rivia, mercenary monster slayer. Your current contract, tracking down a... If you have no other way to play The Witcher, get it on Switch, I guess. <laughs> the Witcher's fantastic, by the way. When The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt Complete Edition comes to Nintendo Switch... But, like, don't get on the Switch unless it's, like, your only way to play it. <laughs> Honestly. Become the most feared pirate in the Caribbean in Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. Then transform into the ultimate assassin hunter in Assassin's Creed Rogue. That's two action-packed games for one great value. All yeah, that's cool. And new features like touch control and motion aiming coming exclusively to Nintendo. Yeah, it can't look very good because that game looks amazing on PC. That game pushed my PC when I had it, like at that time. Looking to take your Slayer on the go, or rookie ready to forge your legacy? You'll hone your skills, craft and customize hundreds of gear options, and team up with other Slayers to take down boss-sized behemoths. As you can see, the folks at Phoenix Labs are adding loads of new content in anticipation of the game's launch on Nintendo Switch. And there's plenty Isn't this like a Monster Hunter clone? Open your calendar. More games are on the way. Oh, are real. Ew, get that out of my face. Simulator. <laughs> People love their sim games. This is cool. I never played the first Nino Kuni. Ew. <laughs> I guess we're going to play farming sim. Out of world. Devil May Cry 2. Ew! <laughs> Why the second one? Just skip it. How's everything going? Next up, Animal Crossing New Horizons. Ooh! Many details about the game back in June, so we prepared a video. For real? Let's see, shall we? I've never played Animal Crossing, so I kind of want to see what it's about. It's funny because I have the 3DS one still in its shrink wrap. Because I got it, I used to work at Best Buy, and I got it like really cheap. Package. I I never opened it. Relaxing time in a haven of nature awaits. For you and the other folks participating in the getaway package, the time's come to get into the groove of deserted island life. It may be a deserted island, but the resident services building at its center is here to support your needs, so there's nothing to worry about. For starters, we'll provide you with a tent. Please select the spot where you'd like it set up. Oh, and there's something else. We'd like to offer you an original Nook Inc. Nook phone. Oh, no. It comes pre-installed with a variety <laughs> of apps for all your deserted island needs, including recipes for crafting tools and furniture. Let's start by crafting an app. This music, dude. We're going to it's chill as fuck. <laughs> this is like the ultimate comfort game. And stones. Then we'll head to resident services and use the workbench. Nicely done. You can use the tools you craft to acquire new materials, like this. And with those, you can craft more items. It's the gameplay loop. Feel free to place <laughs> furniture inside. 
outside. This looks fun. You can fine tune the arrangement. Give me a release date. The decor expresses your style, and you can fully enjoy the deserted island life. Let's head back to resident services. Here we sell tools and furniture. We also buy your unwanted items, including any weeds you remove, as part of our island cleanup plan. In addition to the usual in-game currency, Bells, you can also earn Nook Miles through the Nook Mileage program. You can exchange your miles for special items and recipes. You'll earn miles through a host of activities on the island, so be sure to take advantage of this program. There are many ways <laughs> to experience the joys of life on a deserted island. Go fishing. Oh, they already got me. Anytime there's fishing in a game, they got me. And pick them to make a garland. Thanks to crafting, even weeds have their uses. That's cool. A vaulting pole makes it easy to quickly cross a river. A nutritious snack will help you shovel up a tree in no time. Plant it somewhere oh, else to change things up in that corner of the island. The scenery changes with the time and weather. There will be sunshine, cloudy days, rainfall, and enough wind. I know, right, man? <laughs> Depending on the time of day and the season, you'll encounter different creatures to catch, too. Sociable types who live together on the same island can play simultaneously. Up to four players at a time on one system. Hey, that's cool. Hope you enjoy living together and working together in the same space. With a local wireless or internet connection, you can travel to another player's island for a total of eight players in one visit. The whole scene feels meant to be. Why not snap a photo with everyone and make it all- Oh my god, they added filters. <laughs> That's like the big thing nowadays. How's Deserted Island? Gotta add my Instagram filters. What we've shown you here today is truly just the beginning. There's so much more waiting to be discovered. Oh, look at that gorilla. So many activities, animals to encounter, and more calling to you from the island. We can't wait. <laughs> yeah, the purple hat, dude. I noticed too. March 20th. All right, we'll see, we'll see. So, how'd it look? There's still a bit more time until the game launches, so please stay tuned. All right, the next game will be our last announcement of the day. Please give it a look. Oh yeah, read uh, the 40 minutes. Oh, it's the new Monolith Soft game. Oh, are they porting Xenoblade 1? Dude, that would be my dream come true. I've... Oh, snap. Do you wish to change it? Huh? The future. <laughs> They're doing it. Sweet. That's an instant buy for me. I love the shit out of, of two. Twenty twenty. Damn, we don't have like a Ugh, <laughs> oh, it's probably far off. Xenoblade Chronicles, which originally released in 2012 on the Wii system, is destined to be reborn on Nintendo Switch. They're good stuff. They're fun. The game is good stories. In 2020. Please look forward to more announcements in the future. That's it for today. Thank you for watching.
Hmm. Do, I, do we stick around for the Banjo Kazooie stuff? I mean, where's my controller? We could probably just uh, go and experience it for ourselves. But then again, the servers are probably hammered. I probably won't be able to download shit. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate Game. In our last showcase, I talked a little bit about. Oh, hold off for now. Today, I'd like to show you all how to use Banjo and Kazooie. You may feel like some time has passed since our hero showcase, but we're actually recording this only two days after that broadcast. We sure are busy. Even that guy looks so tired. Look at the bags underneath the eyes. That poor man. The guy needs sleep, dude. And every time I see him, he looks thinner. Like this. With Hero, if you cast spells using command selection, any opposing heroes will block those attacks automatically using their shield. So, in the background, I was actually using the second controller to make the hero look away or do moves so my attacks would connect. Today I have my controllers set up side by side, but back in the GameCube days, I lined them up vertically, like this. Try doing this with the Nintendo Switch Pro controllers, however, and you'll end up accidentally pressing the L and R buttons. So even though it's- What is he getting at? <laughs> this time around, I'll also be doing my best to control two fighters at once, kind of like Banjo and Kazooie. You can't get somebody to control for you, fuck, <laughs> man. <laughs> so, what is Banjo Kazooie? Well, in terms of genre, it's similar to Super Mario 64, and it was first released on Nintendo 64 back in 1998. The character Banjo made his first appearance a year earlier in a game called Diddy Kong Racing. I didn't know that. Banjo Kazooie was released, and then Banjo Tooie. Two titles were then released for Game Boy Advance, although they never came to Japan. And then there's Banjo Kazooie, Nuts and Bolts, which No, no, we don't talk about that one. As some of you may know, the Banjo Kazooie IP now belongs to Microsoft. Technically, they're a rival platform holder. Even so, they were happy for Banjo and Kazooie to join the Super Smash Bros. series. That's good. For that, I'm extremely grateful. Rare also welcomed us with open arms. So, if you want to play Banjo Kazooie today, you can do so on Xbox. I know this is a Nintendo broadcast, but please give the game a try on Xbox. <laughs> Come on, dude. Don't tease us. Now let's talk about the music. The Banjo Kazooie series music. Ain't nobody got an Xbox anyway. Feel to it. If we were to include this music in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate as is, it wouldn't really match the atmosphere of battle, so we put a lot of effort into arranging the music for the game. We'd like to play for you several. 7 out of 10. Yeah! I feel it's a little underwhelming. What's up, Pix? Though that Dino Blade uh, remaster looks hot. Okay. Let's take a look at the that might have been my favorite theme that was announced today. So this is Banjo and Kazooie in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. There's Kazooie. We're using a special ROM today, so the camera is a bit different from the production version. We've included lots of actions Banjo and Kazooie use in their original game. Not final gameplay footage, and yet it's out now. The talent trot here. I get it, though. I get it. And their jumps are based on abilities like flat flip and feathery flap. Their neutral attack is called claw swipes. This ability looks similar to this in the original game, but we've built upon the original motion so it better fits the action of our game. <coughs> I hear you, dude. I want to try out Animal Crossing. I've never tried it. is a forward roll, which is something Donkey Kong uses as well. This move is a pretty useful one. Their down tilt is beat bar. Their up smash is build drill. It looks a bit different from their original games, but the animation reflects the fact that it's a consecutive attack. 
In Japanese, their side smash is called Harisen Kazooie. Oh my goodness, that poor bird. That only exists in Japanese, so I was curious what this move would be called in the West. In English, it's called Regal Bash. I think Regal is the type of bird Kazooie is, so this basically means bird bash, which is pretty accurate. Their neutral air is wing whack. My headset's gonna run out of battery, why now? Their back air is an air rat tat rat which hits three times. Their down air is beak buster, which they use to downstab as they drop. As you can see, even their regular attacks are based on attacks- An island community, huh? The down and up taunts are something that existed in the banjo- <coughs> Excuse me. The up taunt is based on an animation from Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, where Banjo sometimes stretches. Now I'd like to go over their special moves. First, their neutral special is Egg Firing. It's pretty much their go-to move. The eggs bounce. And by holding down the button when launching the eggs, you'll do the attack you see here. Regal Blaster. That's clear animal abuse. <laughs> I know. On this part in Banjo Tooie, where the screen mimics an FPS, you can hold the button for auto fire. But as you do, the power of the eggs will gradually decrease, so you'll need to be careful. You can cancel it by crouching or pressing the shield button. Slams him in his backpack. Special is Wonder Wing. As in the original game, it's an invincible charging attack. Ooh, they're invincible there. And will basically win against any other attack. However, you can see some feathers above Banjo's head. There are okay, so you can't spam it. And I just use up all of them. After using them up, you won't be able to use the attack again until you lose a stock. Since the remaining uses of Wonder Wing only... Yeah, five seems like too much, huh? you'll really need to make sure you hammer the number of uses into your head. You can use it as a recovery option. And since it's likely to trump counterattacks, it doesn't have many disadvantages. But it does have a weak point. If it's blocked with a shield, for instance, you'll be wide open to attack. In addition, you can be grabbed during this move. Mm. At any rate, keep track of how many Wonder Wing uses you have left. And when fighting against Banjo and Kazooie, make sure to take action against this attack and remember to keep an eye on it. It's important to keep this. Yeah, no, it feels it feels more balanced. They they thought it through. Next is their up special, Shock Spring Jump. This move utilizes the Shock Spring Pad from their original game. There are a few things to note. First, you can hit your opponents with the Shock Spring Pad. It can be used to recover, and it's throwable too. Also, it's pretty different from other up specials that carry the fighter upward in that you're still able to jump in mid-air after using it, meaning you can jump twice in a row. Hmm. So if you're falling, you can use it like this, jump and then dodge, increasing your ability to recover. By the way, the height of a shock spring jump will change depending on how long you hold the button down. Note the slight difference in height. Next, for their down special, Rear Egg, they'll fire a grenade out of his backpack. It's a grenade egg. This is a slightly odd projectile in that it can only be launched behind the fighter. And because the grenade egg is football shaped, it's bouncy trajectory. I'm hoping maybe like a Banjo Kazooie shadow drop on the Switch. I've never played Banjo Kazooie. I think it will be a useful tool for keeping opponents in check. It's treated like an item, so you can pick it up and throw it. Your opponents can also throw it back at you. But its detonation sequence is relatively short. So both you and your opponents will need to make sure you throw it quickly or it will explode while you're still holding it. I guess there are a lot of different ways to use this ability. Lastly, their final smash is the Mighty Ginginator. The Mighty Ginginator is what delivered the final blow to Gruntilda in their original game. This move will send your opponents flying.
This stage is called Kurukuriyama in Japan, but in the west it's called Spiral Mountain. As you can see, it's a mountain where the bottom portion is a spiral shape. A rotation icon will appear, and the stage will spin. This is quite unusual, even for the Super Smash Brothers series. That's kind of nauseating, I'm not gonna lie. Anything on the stage, items or otherwise, will also move. As the stage turns, the shape of Spiral Mountain will also transform, meaning your recovery points will also change. Platforms like this will appear from time to time. A bridge will also appear when Gluntilda's lair is visible. Now that we've covered both the fighter and the stage, let's go ahead and jump into some actual battles. This time, I'll be taking on not just one, but two fighters in a team battle. Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong versus Banjo and Kazooie. Hang on, so there are actually two on my side too? So I should be fine, right? Probably not. In fact, definitely not. Looks like I know. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. So I'll play carefully. I should probably keep them in check. Your eggs, which can be fired forward or backward, are useful at times like this. And thanks to Kazooie, Banjo and Kazooie can use moves with a relatively wide range of attack. We'll make good use of these as we take them on. Note we're playing with items on. Hmm, I think we're doing pretty good so far. I have two opponents, and since items are on, they'll have twice as many opportunities to pick up items. And since the final smash meter is on, the opponent can use it twice. I'm at quite a disadvantage, but I'm going to try my hardest. I can use Wonder Ring two more times. Oops, I guess I should be explaining all their moves, huh? Auto fire, auto fire. Ooh, ouch. Oh, their final smash meter's filled up. You can have that. Now. And. Nice. Now that there's one less opponent, this should be easier. I do want to use a final smash, but it might be a bit tough. Oh, that's good. And final smash. I forced him out, so I win. Banjo picks up a jiggy from the original game. <laughs> I know. That's a wrap. That'd be funny. I'd also like to talk about some of the cameos that liven up the stage. First, we have the witch Gruntilda. In Banjo-Kazooie, this poor soul gets sealed underground by a boulder. Anyway, she's very cruel, and you can hear all about her from her sister, Gruntilda. This is Bottles, a mole, and another poor soul. His fate is sealed in the beginning of Banjo 2. He's a friend of Banjo and Kazooie. Next is Mumbo Jumbo. This poor soul had all of his Mumbo tokens <laughs> by Gruntilda. He helps you out in many ways throughout the game. And we have Tootie. Can you spot her? She's running at the bottom. Oh wow, I didn't even notice that until they pointed it out. Barely even make her out. But by zooming in, you can see all the detail, even at her size. You could probably make an action game just using this. She's raising havoc on the vegetable patch for some reason. And after that, she strikes an enigmatic taunt. Now she's heading back home. She looks all calm when you look at her this way, but this soul is actually the saddest of all the souls. You'd understand how miserable <laughs> Fuck your veggies. 
if you saw the game over scene in Banjo Kazooie. Oh, maybe she's not going home? And here come the Jinjos. We saw some of these a short while ago when the mighty Jinjinator appeared. They come in many different colors and were hidden throughout the world by Gruntilda in the original game. So you could say they're also sad souls. And now we see something floating around in the background. These are our basic enemy characters called Buzz Bombs, but since they can float around, they're lucky enough to have made the cut in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. This is what they look like close up. It's basically a dragonfly, right? We put a lot of thought into the guest characters as well, and we put a lot of effort into these hard-to-see areas, so I hope you enjoy it. The guy needs... Just like... Next. Somebody get this man some sleep, <laughs> you know? As I mentioned earlier, we're taking country style music and adapting it for use in battle. We're including a total of 10 music tracks. Of Look how puffy is this guy's eyes is. I know I said it, but like, he looks tired as fuck, dude. Getting all this for $5.99 is a fantastic deal. So, I hope you enjoy it. I know. <laughs> That's really cool. What? Fuck. He created the original Banjo Kazooie's music. Ooh, Grant Kirkhope helped out. I know, now people can speculate on Goku again. It's not gonna happen. But this is the first time I've worked with a musician outside of Japan. I was a bit worried about whether my directions would be understood. But he did an absolutely wonderful job. And here's the list of tracks this time. Sweet! Each of the new tracks has been carefully tailored to match the action taking place on screen. Alongside the launch of Banjo and Kazooie, there will also be a software update. We're very pleased with the sales of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Are you? <laughs> and to express our appreciation, we've added another game mode, which will pretty much be our final new mode. A new game mode? So please take a look. Sweet, I'm glad I stuck around to watch this. And here it is. You need to damage the sandbag in front of you. Oh, people have been wanting this to come back. And with this bat, not with this, but this bat. And off it goes. Hi. Maybe a little too high. And so, Home Run Contest makes its return. It's been powered up in various ways compared to previous Home Run Contests, so please enjoy. This time, Sandback has flown 300 kilometers. I think that's about the distance from Tokyo to Nagoya. That's if you drive on the Tomei Expressway. I have no idea what he's, what he's referencing because I don't know anything about Japan. Let's give it a go. Oh, you can do two players. Keep attacking using both players. I love how he's playing with both controllers. What the fuck? No. <laughs> this isn't how you're supposed to play the game. When I say two players... Let me know. I've been trying to plan one for a long time, but it's hard to get people to go with you. Playing as two fighters. <laughs> I hope you play this with your friends. <laughs> In shared content, many people have uploaded their customized knee fighters. I don't. I'm saving up right now. Up until now I mean, realistically, I could probably just dump it all on a credit card, but I'm, that's not my style. But moving forward, you will be able to freely customize your special moves. If you find a Mii Fighter that you like the look of, you can freely download them and set the special moves however you want and play as them. However, this will not be applied to Mii Fighters created before this software update, and only applies to Mii Fighters created after the update. So I That's hope cool. people can share their Mii's and stuff. Please enjoy many different varieties of Mii Fighters. We will add in some Mii Fighter costumes as well. Please take a look. Huh, <laughs> that looks funny.
mystical ninja going on. That's cool. I'm a big Zero fan. Ooh. Team Rock. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Oh, I love that. Oh, no, the memes. No. <laughs> No, people are gonna meme so hard on this. Sans is... Sans is in Smash now. Are these included with the fighter pass? I'm not sure. No. 75 cents each. I might get the Team Rocket one and then the Zero one. We've added a costume for Sans from Undertale, who was a popular request. And this Sans outfit also comes with a music track. Oh, cool. This will be listed in the other category, so you can check it out there. The arrangement was made by none other than the creator of Undertale himself. Dude, that guy's getting worked now. <laughs> Toby has actually visited my house, and we played Super Smash Brothers Ultimate together. Whoa! Actually, really good. Of all the guests, he was probably the strongest. <laughs> what the fuck? He went to my house, and he was good at Smash. <laughs> I'm just imagining that. What the fuck? Talk about a new set of amiibo that will soon be available. Ooh. Squirtle. The lore of this guy. I <laughs> know. I already have these two. Uh, all of these, whatever. I already have these pre ordered. Oh, I can't wait for the snake one. I wonder why he was hiding. <laughs> they will each be available on September 20th. I don't know why I buy these, man. DLC will be available today. I don't even use the amiibos. I just like collecting them. God damn it. <laughs> Ooh, oh. oh, yeah. As mentioned in Nintendo Direct. Terry Bogard will be joining Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Although we showed the reveal trailer, there was hardly any in-game footage. Some of you may wonder where the in-game footage. They do. Well, it's shaping up nice. You can't really see it in my webcam, but I have some. I have the Zelda ones like hung up. But we weren't quite ready to include it. In well, they're not hung, but like there's like a. I put a little thingy on the wall where they sit on. The Neo Geo opening was fun, wasn't it? I'd like to show you just a little bit of in-game footage of Terry. Here you go. Uh, there are so many people that love uh, this SNK series. Finally, just not in the West, unfortunately. <laughs> Wait, is that all they showed? What the? Fuck? To me, it feels like the finish line is sliding farther away. Oh, the poor man. How much longer can he be involved with Super Smash Bros. Ultimate? But I'm also excited. Adding more characters into the game means that more game worlds will be added to the series. That's crazy that there's going to be more Smash characters after the, the initial five. Even greater opportunity to delight the fans. Wow, dude. At the same time, I feel that Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is now representing so many characters in game worlds that it's become an enormous game. 
Even if the Super Smash Bros. series continues moving forward, I doubt there will ever be an opportunity to bring this many characters together again. And so, I want to keep improving on this record as much as possible. And I will continue to work hard at developing the game. I appreciate your support. That's it for today. So may get this man a hamburger and a bed. <laughs> Sweet. I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. All right, I'm going to chop off the local recording here.